Hey guys, so this week I'm going to be doing a review of a book that I'm in awe of, to say the least. I know I said I was going to review more on my blog, but it's so good I can't help but want to talk about it. Like, oh my god, this book is so, so good. And I don't just mean on a writing style, I mean it's good for like the storyline. The storyline is amazing and the characterization and everything is amazing. And the, imag like, the imaginative nature of it is amazing. But the thing I love most was the diversity of it. And I will get to that in a minute. First, I should probably tell you a bit about this book. Failure to Communicate follows a team of people who make first contact with new planets. So obviously this is a sci-fi, it's set quite far into the future. And what is happening is that the Alliance, which is the big governmental body, sends out the Carpathia and its team to go and um, study these new planets and find out more about its people and find out exactly what level of protection they may need from the Zinac, which are essentially space orcs. Think Lord of the Rings orcs and you're around the same sort of idea of the Zenak. But it's sort of like figuring out if they need any protection from these people and if they want to join the Alliance and to just generally find out more about these people. And it all focuses all around Zandri, who is the main character who studies these animals and aliens and all the rest of it to find out exactly like all their speech patterns and things and tries to find a way to communicate with them. And what's amazing about Zandri is that she's autistic. Can you see why I'm suddenly interested in this book now? She's autistic. And I think she's possibly the most accurate version I have ever seen of a character with autism in my life. Literally, I think she's the most accurate. I know that's a big claim, but to be honest, we have so few bits of representation and some of them are so wildly off. It's insane. Like, in recent years, we've had some quite reasonably good representation. We've had Gary Bell from Alphas, who I loved, and without him, I would not know that I was actually on the autistic spectrum. You've got, I'm going to say Sherlock Holmes. I'm going to say it. They say in um, Howl of the Baskervilles in the BBC series that he's, uh, he has Asperger's, so I'm counting him. Also, my radar pings every single time he's on screen, so he's definitely on the spectrum. And in more recent years, we've also had The Good Doctor, who is also a very, very good representation, but at the same time, none of these are entirely accurate. And I'd say mainly the most accurate is Gary Bell, but again, he has superpowers. So it's kind of, it doesn't certainly cancel it out, but his powers are tied in with his autism. So it didn't feel like I could relate to him as much as I wanted to. But again, that is the best I've ever seen of representation. Obviously, you've also got the curious incident of the dog in the night time, and that was a very good representation as well. But, Zandri. I've never come across a character where I go, oh my god, that is me the whole way through. Also, in this book, it's not just Zandri who is the diverse character, she's the only neurodivergent one, so she's the only one with a mental illness or a learning difficulty or anything like that. But the thing is, she may be the only neurodivergent one, but this is a sci-fi, and you'd expect it to be an all-male cast apart from her. Wrong. There's women everywhere. There is women in practically every single scene with Zandri throughout the entire book. There are, there are female characters in sci-fi, and they're badass, and like, totally different from each other. They're not cardboard cutouts. They're like, they're human and everything, and it's amazing. And within them, they're so diverse. You've got women in religious dress, like, that are just described. You've got women in relationships with each other that's also gone into. It's not gone into that much, because they're more, like, passing characters that sort of go through, and they're sort of, like, in Zandri's periphery, but she's friends with them, and so she talks to them, and you find out about the fact that they're a couple, and things like this. And it's like, what? It was insane. The captain of the ship is a woman. She's an Asian woman. So you've also got that. You've got um, other POC women and POC men everywhere. You've got alien characters who are obviously very, very diverse. You've got like ones who look like parrots, which they don't like, but they are they are similar to like earth parrots, but like six foot tall warriors, which is amazing. You've got characters, also another female character with six legs and is covered in fur. I've forgotten her what she's actually called, but you've got that one as well. 
and you've got so many characters like this. You've got aliens everywhere of all shapes and sizes and descriptions and so many female friendships. There were so many female friendships in this. I lost count of how many female friendships there are and relationships between female characters that are like protective and things and yes, Zandri had enemies but there were so few of them compared to all of her friends who stuck up to, for her and things and female friendships where they weren't fighting over a guy or like trying to outdo each other's hair or whatever it is authors seem to think women do. There were like women helping each other and talking to each other and like actually talking and being friends and helping each other with like traditionally female things like doing hair and how to dress and all the rest of it but it was in the context of helping with the mission and things like this but then they were also talking about relationships and feelings and what to do next and protecting each other and encouraging each other and things like this and I was sat I felt like I was having my mind blown, quite frankly, just on the female friendship side of things, let alone with all of these diverse characters coming through. And it isn't just the female characters who are diverse as well, you've got also got the male characters who are also incredibly diverse and POC and all the rest of it, and it was incredible. You also had descriptions of polyamorous relationships, there were two in this, well there was one that was very definite, very clear and was described quite a lot and there was a second one involving the main character where two other characters were a couple and they kept on inviting her into their relationship because they both love her and guess what? Only one of them was a guy, the other two were women and it was like oh my god the main character is bisexual to start with and it was never done in like a way where it was sort of seen as like fetishized or like sexy or anything like that or like they were just inviting her into their um, duo because she's bisexual or anything like that it was because you could tell these characters genuinely loved her and it was eye-opening and incredible just on that level if that main character had just been like neurotypical and had just been bisexual and it had just been about her being neurotypical doing her job with all of these amazing characters around her I would have been thoroughly impressed but then the author also had her as autistic and described it and had it from her point of view all the way through and I was unbelievably impressed I was so so impressed and so swept up in this and I've never related to a character more in my life I was the detail and everything in this book is incredible and I think I'm right in saying it's own voices I'm pretty sure it's own voices I will leave the author's name here so you can check her out if you want to I cannot pronounce her name I'm afraid I am stupid but I'll leave her name here so you can check her out and everything but if I remember rightly she is autistic as well or at least on the autistic spectrum so this is an own voices work but it still felt so researched and so real to me I spent the entire time reading this going that's me that's me that's me I relate to that I relate to that I've done that I know what that feels like and things like this the whole way through it was so unbelievable to me because I've never read a character like this detailed to me before I've never had that sort of feeling you know, and I should probably give you some examples, and luckily I wrote some down. There's scenes where Zandri talks about having one gun on each leg, because even though she is supposed to be just helping to communicate with other species, she still has guns because she's still expected to fight at times if she gets attacked, which she does quite a few times. So she's got a gun on, it, on each leg, and she has that because even though she um, it is also safety, it's because she likes having equal um, weights on both legs, and she doesn't like being uneven in that. And I relate to that totally. I mean, I'm I'm not actually that even right now. But if I only have one set of jewellery on on this side and nothing on this side, I'd feel really odd. I have to have things equal on both sides. And, like, if I touch something with one hand, I have to touch it with the other one because then it's equal and things. And I have to do things equally like that. And I've never read something like that in a book. It was such a shock to read that because I was like, I've never seen that before. In any, like thing following an autistic character that's never been mentioned so I was really impressed with that to start with it was also covering bits like when they're in like huge like 
spaceship docking stations that's filled with people and like there's so many people around and noises and smells and touching like there's too many people like around her and stuff and she panics and I know that feeling that's me every Christmas during a shopping trip for food or going into town or anything like that that's me during like every Christmas including this Christmas just gone it was exhausting and panicking on so many levels and just to read it in that kind of detail I was reading it going I know how this feels and I related to that on its own just so much and there were so many bits like that the whole way through that just I was just reading it going I know all of this and I instantly understood exactly what she was on about because I know that feeling I've done it I know exactly how that feels and just seeing that by itself was just incredible and that's without going into the stuff that the author wrote into the story about other characters surrounding Zandri as well which just gave me so much hope because there is admittedly a couple of characters in the book who think that Zandri is essentially just useless essentially she's just there to be brought along because there's nothing else she can do and no one else believes she can do anything and that she can't even pull off the mission that she's supposed to be pulling off and that the rest of her team do, does all of her work while she just stands there and that she's not capable of thought and things like this and there is a character in there who does keep on going on about this several times and while he stood up to it was quite harmful to see but then when you see the other characters standing up for her and seeing her prove him wrong all the way through was so heartening. And to see how everyone sort of banded around Zandri the whole way through was just unbelievably beautiful. There are characters in there who know she's autistic and they don't care. In the sense that they don't care because... They, they just accept that she's autistic, she can't do anything about it, it's just her, and they just, they love her anyway. They love her because she's her. They don't care that she's autistic, they don't care that she sometimes has meltdowns, sometimes that she just needs to be left alone, or anything like that. Instead, they give her the space that she needs, they help her whenever they can. So, for example, they've got a character who, the one with six legs, who's covered in fur, Zandri finds um, holding onto her fur is very very calming because of the um, touch sensation and so whenever she gets like stressed or anything this character comes along and lets her like stroke her fur and all the rest of it whenever she's stressed to help her calm down and it's just seen as something that she does because that's what friends do and it's not inconveniencing the other character or anything she's just helping because she knows that she, uh, her friend gets stressed and she's just helping her calm down and it was just incredible to see stuff like this and I just can't quite fathom the like how much this meant to me as an autistic to read stuff like this and it's like it's done all the way through like all of these characters care for her as she is and you see this love and friendship come through in all of them all the time and it's not just a thing that they feel like is inconveniencing them or is going out of their way to do things to help her they're just helping her because they love her and they are friends with her and she is multiple friends across the ship in every corner of it and they all help her but at the same time she kicks ass by herself and she does like everything she needs to do it's so rare to see autistic characters like this and especially now when in recent years we have lost so many autistic characters on the TV because either the show has been cancelled or it's just met its end and other people just aren't writing autistic characters. You have The Good Doctor but quite frankly it's a very good heartening series but at the same time he's not that accurate because I know what it feels like to like be in that stressful situation and I know that he wouldn't cope with that no matter how focused he was and no matter how in love with surgery he was he couldn't do that 
And instead, like, and while it's very nice to see an autistic character on TV, it's still not the portrayal that I wanted it to be, and it's not as accurate as I wanted it, like, as I would hope for it. And it's still a good show, I definitely recommend watching it, but it's not the same as reading a book like this, if you know what I mean. And, like, in recent years, even, like, as we've lost these characters, I've also noticed that there's been an uptick in, like, prejudice and things. Like, two series with love came out, and if you haven't, if you don't know what two series with love is about, I'll leave a link to my blog post talking about all the horrendous things that were said in there, the horrendous and untrue things said in this book about autistics. In a world where that book is released and it's seen as okay to treat autistics like that and like show, like, make the world think that we are like that constantly and that we aren't capable of human thought and that we aren't human and things like this and then to read books like failure to communicate it's such a breath of fresh air and such a fantastic feeling i can't quite describe to you how that feels and how good it feels it's just i have no words to describe how much i loved it i loved reading about a character like me and reading such an accurate portrayal where at the end of the story she's not changed into a more human being she's exactly as she is and her friends still stick by her even though in the course of the story other like bad things happen that aren't her fault they still stick by her even though some of the blame is tried to be put on her and at the end of the book there's still hope for her and her friends are still with her and she's still the same as she was she is now a slightly more mature but she's still autistic, she's still treated as an autistic and she still is displaying symptoms and things like this. It's not a cure or anything because there's no need for a cure and this entire book focuses on the fact that there's no need for a cure and that we are brilliant as we are and it celebrates us and I'm really passionate about this, if you can't tell, but it just meant so much to, for me to read it and I have to thank the author for sending me a review copy of this so I could read it and I'm just so glad that I did because I'm now desperate to pick up the like prequel and the sequel whenever it comes out. I'm just, I'm in awe of it. I absolutely loved it and I would highly recommend that anybody who sees it on Amazon or anywhere to read it because it's just a fantastic book like even if like even if you aren't autistic it's a brilliant book so you can see into the mind of an autistic and you can learn so much from it and even if you don't really care about autism that much or autistic characters or whatever it's still a brilliant storyline and there's still characters that you any like practically anybody from any walk of life can see themselves in despite the fact that it's a sci-fi it's just an incredible book i absolutely thoroughly enjoyed it and i can't speak highly enough of it to be honest i cannot speak highly enough of it i absolutely loved it so much honestly just read this book it is it is incredible it truly is like it's definitely shot already to one of my favorite books of the year and it's only january it's only mid-January and that's already one of my favourite books of the year, which is saying something, but it's just incredible. Seriously, you have to go and read this book. It's, it's truly amazing and if you ever see it, pick it up and read Failure to Communicate. I think we're going to have to go now because otherwise I'm just going to be talking about this book for hours and I could honestly talk about this book for hours but I think I've rambled on enough so if you like this video please do give me a thumbs up and if you've read it or if you're an autistic who's read really good own voices or anything else uh, like any other book that's to do with autism please tell me down below um, what you thought of them and give me the recommendations because I'm all about the recommendations for autistic books or really diverse books or anything like that please tell me down in the comments any of those and all my social media links will be down below in the description along with the link to the E2 series with love review if you want to check anything about that out and if you want to see any more of my videos please click subscribe here and over here will be the link to my previous video but until next time guys Bye.